Hello everybody, it's Ivan and in this video I'm going to show you how to create beautiful animations with Corona Render. So let's dive in. For this project I'm using a simple interior scene with a table, vertical louvers and a camera. The light is at night with artificial lights. Let's prepare a few things for the animation. First, we will take a look at the timeline, which will represent when changes happen in the animation. By default, it is set to 100, usually 24, 25 or 30 frames per second are needed. It might be 60 as well, but this is too many frames for rendering and the feeling will not be cinematic. Open the time configuration button. I want a 4 second animation and will use 30 frames per second. In total, that is 120 frames. Ok, now the timeline has become longer, but as we can see, the total number is 121. The reason is because 0 will be the first frame. We can just start from 1 and the total count will be 120. Next thing that I like to show is the tangents. You know how some animations start slowly and increase the speed during animation. Others finish with a slower speed of moving. The first option is a combination of both of them. With the slow option, the animated object will start moving slowly and increase the speed. While with the fast, the effect will be the opposite. The object will start moving fast and decrease its speed with the time. Linear means that the movement will be consistent. It is a matter of personal choice, so I will use the linear movements for the object, at least in most cases. Let's take a look at the overs and how to animate them. There are instances so the thing that I will do is to add X-Form on one of them. I want them to rotate while the camera is moving. To do it, let's click the X-Form modifier and on the Auto key. Now the timeline is enabled and we can create keys by changing parameters in different moments. Move the slider to the point we want the over to stop rotating. In this case, something close to the end. The 100th frame will be ok. If I rotate it, you notice that all of them are rotating thanks to the X form modifier. Keep in mind that in the animation, the object will start rotating from the initial position to the position in the key we have just created. Click again on the X form modifier and the Auto key option to disable them. Ok. If we move the slider, you notice that we have animated that object. Let's now animate the camera movement. Select the whole camera with the target, if you have a target. Since I will have just one camera movement, I will switch the tangents to default in and out, thus the camera will start moving slowly, increase its speed and slow down before the end. To animate it, I will do almost the same as I did with the object. Enable the Auto key option and create a key. Since the camera should stop moving at the end of the animation, I will move the slider to the end. The easiest way is to click on the Go to End button. Now we just need to move the camera to the place we want to be at the end of the animation and disable the Auto key option. If we click on the play button, we will see a preview of the animation, the overs and the camera. The third thing that I would like to animate is the depth of field. In general, my idea is to move the focus from the overs to the table during the animation. I have created a separate more detailed video 
for that effect. So if you want to learn more about the depth of field, you can check the link in the upper right corner. To set that effect, I will select the camera, enable the depth of field and override the focus to reach the louvers. Then, change the F number to 2 in order to make it stronger. Let's start an interactive render to see the result. Ok, the focus is on the right place now, so we can start animating it. I want the focus to stay on the louvers for the first, let's say, 10 frames and then to start moving. To achieve it, I will create a key here and move the focus slightly. Then, I want the focus to reach the table in the middle of the animation, so I will move it somewhere close to the middle of the timeline. Adjust the focus distance to reach the table. More specifically, the fill camera on it. Ok, disable the auto key option and have a preview. Now, when the camera starts moving, the focus will stay for a moment on the louvers before moving and reaching the table. Then the camera will move to the end without changing the focus. Great, it's time to see how to render out our animation. Open the render settings. In the common tab, switch from single frame to active time segment. Also, from the render output we should set a path to save the frames. As we already said, we will render 120 frames. Basically, each one should be automatically saved after it's finished, before the next one starts. Then, in the Scene tab, we need to specify when the frame is rendered. As we all know, the rendering corona is progressive and if we don't set limits, it can render forever. We can set a time limit if we are rendering a test animation or we are limited in time. For example, if we have 5 hours available and know that our animation will consist of 120 frames, we can calculate how much time should be spent on each frame. For the final animation, usually the noise level should be set if we want to be sure that animation will look fine. Usually it is between 2 and 5, but in some cases it may be ok with 7, while in others even less than 2. The best way is to render one frame and see what noise level will be sufficient for our project. Let's set the denoiser as well. The best choice for animation is the Corona high quality. The rest are preferred for single renders. And one thing left. Navigate to the performance tab and in the UHD cache switch from still frame to animation. Otherwise, we can end up with flickering animation. In some cases, if we don't have moving lights or fast moving objects, it may be suitable to use the pre-calculation options, but I will not risk that in our case with the moving covers and the depth of field. Finally, click render. After some time, hours probably, the frames will be rendered. Now the question is how from all of these images to end up with a video file. There are a lot of options to do it, so let's see some of them. First, I will show you how to do it in Adobe Photoshop, since it's already installed on a lot of Archivist Artist 3D machines. Then, I will show you how to do it with Chaos Player, which is a lot more professional choice and it's included in a lot of Chaos licenses. Keep in mind that you can do that in a lot of different solutions like Adobe Premiere Pro, Adobe After Effects, Fusion, Nuke, DaVinci and many more. Tell me in the comments if you are already using one of these or another app to stitch the animation into a video file. In Photoshop, first we need to enable the timeline option. I bet you haven't known about that. 
Now, from the file, choose Open, navigate to the frames, select one and check the option for Image Sequence. Set the frame rate we want, as we discussed, 30 in our case. We can see that the animation is here. Click play for preview, although it is slightly choppy. You can also make some small core corrections here and add layers. To export it, go to File, Export, Render Video. Keep in mind that Photoshop is definitely not the best option for bigger animations. Chaos Player is a more professional choice since it's designed to preview animations. Just need to drag one frame and the animation will be loaded. You can make some small core corrections here as well and once you are ready, navigate to File, Export Layer Sequence. Ok guys, this was all for this tutorial. If you want to see more Corona content, check out my other videos and stay tuned for my next one.